theyeshiva.net. You're accustomed, you're accustomed, if I may say, that when you hear criticism, it's coming from a hatred to Israel. It's coming from a venom towards other Jews who don't fit in. But you're dealing with the wrong person with that. You understand? Right. Here it's coming no, from no, love, you one from on respect. One, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't speak with maybe um, such passion. So I'm saying there's a lot of religious Jews who are misguided. They're indoctrinated. Right. You understand? Right. They call secular Jews goyim. Right. So In fact, anybody who doesn't be, dress like them, be, anybody who doesn't dress like them is called a goy. Right. Thank right? And they treat Israel in a horrible way. There's even people, I don't know if you see the videos, the crazy extremists, soldiers coming to Davin Maidiv, right? You ever see these videos that go around? You're Shalayim? Soldiers, from soldiers coming to Davin Maidiv with a mincha, and they scream and throw rocks and, and want to beat them up and so forth. You ever see what they do? Yeah. Yeah? So these are, I would love to call them lunatics. Unfortunately, they're not. They're, they're really brainwashed. They're indoctrinated. But here we're coming from a completely different position. It's not... Uh... Huh? I once gave a speech about... I spoke about Israeli soldiers. And I said that Russia... It was a very big island. There were like 2,000 people from Jews. And I said that when you go in there to Israel and you see an Israeli soldier... The right thing to do is go over to him, every soldier, and say, And give him a hug, buy him an ice cream, yeah? Say shalom aleichem to him, and just say, I want to thank you for sacrificing your life for the seven million Jews living in the Holy Land. That's what I want to do. That's, what, that's all you should do. Not getting into the argument, serve, not serve, who should serve. I'm not getting into that. But if there wouldn't be Israeli soldiers, everybody would be murdered. Every yeshiva bach has to go to war, right? There would be no Rosh Yeshiva. Even if Shmuel Oyebach would hold that every yeshiva bach has to go to war, because if there would be no Israeli soldiers, you have to close the basement, you have to close the safe and protect the Jewish people, right? Even the most crooked cup in the world, even the most crooked mind. So the fact is that they're protecting you. You could sit and learn. The minimum thing you could do in all the Musa Shmuz and in the literature of yeshivas, they always talk about Hakara Satoiv. You ever heard the word Hakara Satoiv? Yeah. So what does Hakara Satoiv mean? That if somebody passes you a tissue box, you have to say thank you. And what if somebody sacrifices his life for you and your brother and your sister? You don't have to say thank you. If he passes a tissue box, there's a mitzvah of Hakara Satoiv because he passed you a tissue box. And if not, you have to ask him a chil Erevim Kippur. If he doesn't want to be Michael, you have to send three friends to ask Mechila because he... Cause because you didn't say thank you for passing the tissue box from one table to another table, right? And for a soldier who's 19 years old, the same age, you're sitting in the mirror or in Slabotka or in Panovich or in Hevron or in Chabad, wherever you are, right? Or in Shabin, and you're learning and he's on the front lines and he buried his friend and he buried another friend and his parents buried a child and he sacrificed your life. So you don't have to say thank you. There's no Akkara Satayv there. You don't have to say thank you. So I saw a few people walked out. So afterwards I asked them, why do you walk out? I was walking out. They said, HaKadosh HaToyv to them? I said, yeah. They said, they hate us more than the Arabs. The secular soldiers hate us more than the Arabs. I said, I want to give you a bracha. That if you get lost in Israel... Yeah, you should get lost instead of getting lost in Ramla by the Arabs you should get lost by secular Israeli soldiers I'll tell you what's going to be the difference if you get lost in Ramla they'll throw you off a porch they'll cut you into pieces and they'll dance you remember the lynch with the two soldiers right if you'll end up with secular Israeli soldiers they'll give you a hot bowl of soup they'll give you to drink They'll give you a night's sleep and they'll return you to your families in safety. So just my blessing to you that you should end up by the people who hate you more than the Arabs. Because the people who hate you more than the Arabs will actually make sure you live. And the people who hate you less than the soldiers will actually make sure that you die in torture. That's my blessing to you. Don't end up by the people who love you more. <laughs> end up by the people who hate you more. <laughs> my blessing to you. So where does that come from? That's an absolute indoctrination and distortion, right? 
it's a violation of humanness, of menschlichkeit, of Torah, of, of Yer Shamayim, of everything. And this has nothing to do with anybody's opinion, right, about if Yeshiva Bachim should go serve or not. So I'm not coming from that place. You, 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 you react from that place. You don't understand. This is coming from a place of very profound appreciation for everything that's going on. Nonetheless, nonetheless, one has to appreciate mistakes that great people make. Okay. <laughs> you know I could talk about this for 29 hours, right? <laughs> I once gave a shir, the Chsam Seifer writes, Chsam Seifer writes, why did the Jews go crazy from Dosan and Aviram? Why did they have such influence? By Koirach, they mamish. It was two, two troublemakers, yeah? You have two troublemakers. Every shul has two troublemakers that sit in the back and hate the rabbi, the gabbai, the president, right? They hate everybody. Yo, every shul has that. The bigger the shul, the more people. But they always have two people in the corner, always complain. But nobody takes them seriously. They're chronic complainers. You know those people. Whatever you do is not good. So those, why did people take them so seriously? Some Seifer says that Jews saw Dosan and Aviram as great as Moshe and Aaron. So somebody once asked me, where did some Seifer come up with this? That they saw Dosan and Aviram as great as Moshe and Aaron. And I was searching. It's very hard to know. Where did some Seifer come up with this? And then I found an incredible, incredible source. Incredible. It says in Parshas B'Shalach that V'omar Pari L'Bnei Yisrael Nevuchim Heim Ba'aretz Pari told the Jews that the Jews got lost in the desert. Sagar Aleim Hamidbar. What do you mean V'omar Pari L'Bnei Yisrael? They weren't there anymore. They left. Right? So Rashi says it means he said about the Jews. Targum Yonis Ben Uziel says that Pari spoke to two Jews who stayed behind. Dosan and Avirim. Dosan and Avirim didn't go out by Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim. They stayed behind. They stayed behind. They never went with the Jewish people. The question is, if they stayed behind, how were they in the desert? <laughs> right? They fought with Kairach. How, how did they end up in the desert? It's crazy. They ended up in Mitzrayim. How did they end up in the desert? The Pshat is, they went later. When did they go later? They were with Para. That means they went together with Para to pursue the Jewish people in the Yamsuf. But then they should have drowned. They went with Pari into the ocean, into the sea. They should have drowned. So half of a fellow, what happened? So the Be'er Mayim Chaim writes that there was a special Kriya Siyamsa for Dosan and Avira. Why was there a special Kriya Siyamsa for Dosan and Avira? So Yeshua Leib Diskin, the, who was a Litvak Sheba Litvak, he was the Rav of Brisk. Reb Chaim Brisk is saying one of the three Luyim of the generation. You heard of Rabbi Shul Leib Diskin, yeah? Do you still get the uh, request for stocking from the orphanage, the Diskin yeah. orphanage in Yerushalayim? Beisai Yisayim Diskin? So he founded in Yerushalayim. He was the Rav of Brisk, Lomjem, Ezrich, and then Yerushalayim. The son of a Brisk. He was a Gaon One of the biggest Litvish Shagdai Hadar, Rabbi Shul Leib Diskin. So he says, all the Jews who didn't want to leave Mitzrayim died by Makas Chayshech. Why didn't Dasan and Aviram die by Makas Chayshech? The answer, he says, is this. The people who didn't want to leave Mitzrayim, it's because they felt close to the Egyptians. They felt close to the Egyptians. They didn't want to be part of the Jewish people. He said they were the aristocrats. They were the feinschmeckers. They had special condominiums in Egypt. They were, they were chaverlap. They were mayafes. They would be invited to the operas and to the ballets and to the receptions. They, were, they hung out in the salons of Berlin and of Cairo with the anti-Semites because they were, like, they were better than everybody else. We should leave this one as not Dosan and Avirim. Dosan and Avirim, it says in Parsha Shmois, were one of the police who were beaten by Paro's people because they didn't want to demand from the Jews the quota of the bricks. So it says Dosan and Avirim, one of the police. We should leave this one says they were beaten for other Jews. So even though they were Yeshoyim and Kaifim and Apikorsim, they didn't die by Makas Chayshech. Not only that, according to the Be'em Chaim, they had their own Kriyas Yamsu. So when Pari comes into the sea, the sea comes back, and they have their own Kriya Siyamsav, and they go through to the other side, and then they spend the rest of the time fighting Moshe and Aaron, because they don't believe in anything. But they took a beating for the Jewish people. And that's why they would treat it. Imagine now two Jews have their own Kriya Siyamsav. Of course you would respect them. Who wouldn't respect them? They have their own Kriya. Who gets their own Kriya Siyamsav? 
Tafla of Fela. And if you read the story of Kriyas Yamsuf, you'll see the story of Kriyas Yamsuf says twice. I did a shir about this Parshas B'Shalach. The story of Kriyas Yamsuf is repeated. And the second time, you could see it's different than the first time. According to this, you could see because it was a second Kriyas Yamsuf, a Dasan and Avira. So I said, here's the Chayim. You have your Dasan and Avira. Kaifrim apikursim gmurim. They were by Matan Torah, they didn't believe in God. They saw Kriyas Yamsuf, they didn't believe in Moshe. They complained about the man, they complained about the miragum, they fought against Kaya. Real troublemakers. But because they took a beating for another Jew, they had their own Kriyas Yamsuf. Imagine, they had their, and they didn't die with everybody else because they weren't sitting in an ivory tower, right, and saying, oh, these crazy Jews. What they used to, the Germans used to call the, the, the Eistjuden, yeah, Eistjuden. The Jews of the East, the dirty, filthy Jews of the East with the Langapayas. They weren't like that. They felt for the Jewish people. They cried with them. They were beaten. They were at least culturally very Jewish and they were ready to fight for them. So for them, they had a special Kriya Siamsev. So imagine a 19-year-old boy. Yeah? Nishkin Kaifa, Nishkin Apikaris. He's a Tinik Shanish, but he grew up without Shabbos, grew up without anything. And puts his life on the line. Not only he gets a beating, he's ready to die for the Jewish people. You don't think he gets his own Kriyas Yamsov. You don't think he deserves at least a thank you. This was my uh, message. You hear Lenny Yes, sir. Okay, these are Jews that take a beating for another Jew. Okay. I'll tell you a Gishmaka Maisa, a beautiful story. The Rav of Vilna was a Jew named Reb Chaim Oizegradzensky. You ever heard of Reb Chaim Oizegradzensky? He was, a, he was a great a giant. He passed away in 1940 in Vilna, right before the war, the beginning of the war. He had one daughter, but she passed away before him. So there's no, uh, he didn't leave any descendants. Reb Chaim Moiseh, he wrote Shalsa Chubas Achiezer. He once met one of the, Pol- the Rebbes of Poland, the Ostrovce Rebbe, Rabbi Chiel, mayor of Ostrovce. He lived in Ostrovce. Ostrovce is a city in Poland. <coughs> he passed away in 1928, Tofresh Peches. He was a very holy Jew, and he was also a big gone. He fasted for 40 years. You know that? 40 years? Where, where was Ostrovce? Ostrovce in Poland. Ostr- Next visit, you'll call it Ostrovce. The Bichil Mayor of Ostrovce. He wrote a sefer called Mayor Ene Chachamim. He was a very, spe- he fasted 40 years. He would eat 40 years straight. They said even Shabbos, some people say even Shabbos. <laughs> That's there was a shmuy at night he would eat a little kasha, like oatmeal, uh, a little kasha. That's it for forty years. The oilam, the, the chassidim would say that it was because he felt the Holocaust coming, and it was like the tzaddik. The Gemara says in Gittin he also fasted forty years. He was mamish. He was a unique Jew. They say that once he told a baker he had a store. He had a, there was a Jew who had a store open on stuff on Shabbos, and he said you mechalos Shabbos you should close the store. He says Rabbi also mechalos Shabbos. They say that you fast on Shabbos. Shabbos. <laughs> He says, yeah, but from my Chilo Shabbos, nobody learns. From your Chilo Shabbos, people copy you. <laughs> <laughs> it's different. <laughs> my Chilo Shabbos, you can do. Ken's fast. <laughs> nobody wants to copy it. Okay. <laughs> huh? <laughs> there was once a few Chabad Bachram who started to copy the Lubavitcher Rebbe, the shoes he was wearing and the sacks he was wearing. So somebody told his wife, so she said, Zonzeyem nachmachem mit seine Tanesim. Why don't they emulate him how much he fasts? Because <laughs> he used to fast nonstop. He fasted sometimes weeks straight. So that month, whatever, he didn't stop fasting. So, uh, anyway, so, so the Bichil made of a Strofza meets the Chaim Oizer once. So Chaim Oizer was a Litvish Godel. He was from the Litv, you know, the world of Lita, Lithuania. And he was from the world of, 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 of Poland, of Chassidus. So Chaim Moise tells uh, the Avtsovtse Rebbe, Avtsovtse Rebbe did not like talking. He would barely speak. I mean, he had a big hoif, he had a yeshiva, but he wouldn't speak a lot. He once said, they once asked him why, so he said, my father was a baker. His father was a baker. And he taught me one thing in life. And that is, if you keep the oven closed, the bread comes out much warmer and much better. <laughs> you open the oven... It releases a lot of the air, it releases the heat, it releases the warmth. That's what he said. That's what I learned from my father. You keep the oven closed. So the Hebben of Art. I don't know if I should be the one saying it, but... Uh, 
But the vart is a vart, that's certainly. So uh, the Bechiel Meir would not speak out. So Chaim Moise meets him, and it was a simcha by him. So he says, Astrof Tzerebe Zokta Vart. You know, say something. He doesn't like saying. <laughs> you know, he made it with his face, he doesn't want to say. So he said, uh, Come on, you can't let me go without a vart. Mezokta Chafai Chaziz, I Tagavri Rabbe. They say about you that you're a great man, a gavri rabbi. So he says, thank you, but vos epis. He says, they say you're a gon, you're a talmud chacham, you're a saratari, you're a mamisha, a genius, a gavri rabbi. How could you not say something? So the Bechil Meva stuff just says, that's not pshat a gavri rabbi. Gavri rabbi is not somebody who knows how to learn. He says, why do you say that? <laughs> so he got a word from him. So I'll tell you why. The Gemara says in Makas, Tav Chavbeis, Omar Rava, the Babylonians are foolish. Why? They stand up in front of a Sefer Torah, but they don't stand up in front of a Talmud Chacham who learns the Sefer Torah. Why is it so foolish? He says, because look at the look at the Koyach of the Chacham. The Pasuk says in Parshish Ki that when somebody deserves lashes, you have to give him Kedayar Boyim B'Misper. You give him 40. The rabbis came and they said, it's not 40, it's 39. And they learned it out from the Psukim that it's not 40 and 39. So you see their Kayach to interpret and give commentary to the Sefer Torah. So if you're respecting the Torah, you should certainly respect them. That's what the Gemara says in Marcus. As to Asraf Tzerebetev Chaim I don't understand. Why did Rav have to go running to Parshas Kiseitze? He has it in Parshas Emmer. Usfartim Lechem Imacharis HaShabbos. Tispiru Chamishim Yoyim. Count 50 days, came the Rabbanan and said, it's not 50, it's 49. And also they learned it out from Lemudim, it's not 50. They did the same thing, they have a koyach to interpret the Sefer Torah. Why did he run to Kiseitze? Is the Charaya, he says, that the, God, the Gemara says it's a Gavri Rabbi, that the Tamat Hochem is a Gavri Rabbi. The Charaya, that a Gavri Rabbi, a great man, is not somebody who knows how to say a Pshetl in Chumash, Pshetl in Torah. A Gavri Rabbi is somebody Vos and nem tarop a klap for naiden. A Jew is supposed to get forty lashes, and he says instead of forty, he gives him thirty-nine. He takes off one klap, one spank, some pain of a Jew. Das macht him a That makes him a great person, not his uh, brilliant, uh, encyclopedic, profound knowledge. And nem tarop ain't klap for naiden. They say to Chaim Moises, said, Ah, das is chesidus. Chaim Oiz, got very excited. He said, ah, das is chesidus. As I did tell man, ah. This class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net slash donate.